Well, here's my 83 Goldwing Interstate. It's a GL1100. This was built over in Ohio back in the day. And uh, it was a naked bike, as they call it. It didn't have the wind jammer system on it. And a good way to tell um, if this didn't come out of the factory with these accessories, it had the uh, insignia on it right there. And if it come out of the factory with this uh, accessories added to it, then you wouldn't have seen this uh, right here, that badge. So, um, all right. Well, I'm kind of orienting this towards uh, some questions some people have asked about uh, um, how I do the carburetors and, and rebuild them and what tools I use. So I'm going to kind of stumble through this one here. Because this is a first take video, so <laughs> sorry about that. I'm no professional, but uh, anyway, yeah, right here, the carburetor system. And in order to get this off, you can actually do it with it on the bike still. And pretty much, all you need to do is take these four bolts off here, loosen these two clamps here, take a heat gun. Or hair dryer or whatever get that good and hot and you can pop those right off and then uh, up under here is the push-pull throttle uh, cables where they set up at and I gotta say as many carburetors as I've done that's the funnest part to get off and to put back on is putting those cables back in place on that carburetor in the back there but with the right tools there it's not too bad um, so yeah and then over here of course pop the uh, fuel line off this one here goes to the carburetor and then again take these four bolts off and then take loosen these two uh, clamps here put some good heat to it and uh, pop these off as one unit don't separate these or you ruined it and uh, another good tip is these right here. Let's see if I can do this. These right here need to come off. There's two screws that hold those on. If you pop those off, then it allows room for you to slide this carburetor out. And so, yeah. And then that's that's pretty much it. And then when people send them to me, of course, they leave all this stuff off, and they just have the basic carburetor, um, drain the fuel out, run paper towels in all the open areas. And then when people send them to me, of course, they leave all this stuff off, and they just have the basic carburetor, um, drain the fuel out, run paper towels in all the open areas, what have you. And um, it's... Uh, that's pretty much it in a nutshell you know is anyway that so that's that so when I get these carbs this is where I kind of keep a lot of my little necessities here's a nice little item this right here cost me eight bucks on Amazon it's like a micrometer and I use this to adjust the height of the floats on the carburetors and you get a digital number out of it right there so you know just something cheap because I don't use it for much of anything else but it does a great job of uh, you know how I measure the floats which is 15.5 millimeters by the way for this particular carbs and for all you people thinking you're gonna get sneaky and get metric o-rings <laughs> it don't work that way you really do need to get the official o-rings and these carburetors believe it or not um, there are no gaskets in it it's all o-rings or diaphragms and so yeah you really need to that's why I always stress getting uh, good carburetor kits complete kits and that's why I say the Randec kits they're like 250 53 bucks I think it is but you get every last O-ring, um, 
D-shaped O-rings. There's a couple of them in there that have to have a flat side on them. Plus you get the four diaphragm um, cutoffs that goes onto each carburetor. Plus you get the accelerator pump diaphragm for the number three carburetor. And uh, these are the tools I use. Um, this is a real handy item. It's, a, it's like a little impact wrench. And this is great when you go to split the carburetors. You've got some hidden bolts in there. And uh, they can be kind of mean to get off. Uh, it's tight to get to. But that right there will break them loose. And this right here, kind of as a side note, if you're doing um, uh, uh, seals or anything like that uh, for the, uh, the suspension right here, Right up in here, if you get under this cap, and down in here, there's like a big C uh, clip that holds that inner seal in, and it's deep. So you can't you really need to get something that has a deep nose on it like this for, to get down in there and uh, reach those. I think I paid eight bucks for this on Amazon. You know, I don't need those much, you know, doing my own bike like that, but it sure was a lifesaver for getting down in there and getting those fussy seat clips out of there, especially if they've been sitting in there for a long time. Another good item is this right here. Vice grips with a nose on it. That's good for uh, pulling those stripped out screws like I get sometimes when a carburetor comes in and the, the uh, head the screws all stripped out because they weren't using the right uh, kind of uh, Phillips head. Um, another little thing here, I keep getting off track a little bit, but these right here, if you're doing um, your um, your belts, your timing belts on the front of the engine, which you should do if you get a new, well, new to you bike like that, consider those belts up inside there. That's actually right here. Consider that they're over 40 years old. And unless you know for sure, you don't know how old those belts are. And I pulled mine apart and it still had the Honda Insignia on it. And they were still in good shape, but again, they were 40 years old, so I replaced them. And uh, there's two timing gears on each side for the valves. And those have to be perfectly lined up when you're replacing those belts. Now, there's a million ways you can do that to hold them in place, but I got a hold of a fella online. He makes these 3D, like a 3D printer, makes these up. And this locks both of those um, timing gears in perfect place so you can, uh, you know, <laughs> dog around, fuss and fight and get those uh, belts on and you're not going to mess with the timing at all. It'll be perfect just the way you pull it apart. So that's a little side note. And uh, right here, these two little items are really handy when you're trying to get those push-pull throttle cables off of the carb themselves. Um, they're, they're up in there and unless you got some really thin fingers, those come in real handy for that. And another thing I got uh, is a cordless um, 3 8 wrench here. This thing has just been a lifesaver. When you get up into some tight spots, this thing will break those bolts loose. And uh, it holds a good charge. I don't think I've charged this thing twice. And I've done a lot of all the complete work on that bike using this wrench and these right here they're JIS screwdrivers and these right here are lifesavers they're not your typical Phillips head screwdrivers the tips on them are a metric size that fits all the Phillips head screws on that bike so you got a fighting chance if you have one that's fighting you to to come off uh, this will hold tight and uh, it'll break them loose but again if you can't break them loose that's where this comes in so yeah and I got I got these four these work perfect technically I only really been using these two right here out of the kit um, 
Yeah. Right there. Yep. So, got that. And then this, when I'm popping uh, the pilot jets out of each carburetor, this just fits down in the little channel there so I can unscrew those without tearing them up. Because if you tear those up, they're little brass parts. And you don't want to mess around with them. And this right here is great for popping O-rings off. Like I said, that whole carburetor is made up of O-rings. No gaskets. This is great for getting up in there and pulling it. Breaking it loose. Because some of those O-rings, uh, carburetors I've had in, are hard as a rock. They'll actually crumble. And then I try to take like a little uh, pair of... Uh, Oh, I don't know, needle nose, and you just got to grip the edge of it and pull it off, and it'll come off in pieces. And then you got this. This is a great little tool. Now, this is what I use when I synchronize the carbs after I put them back on, or get them uh, put together, all back together. I'll use this. This is a combination screwdriver, and that right there fits the... Uh, individual adjustments for each carburetor and then I use this after I get it running to sink the carbs to get the final sink and a lot of people think you know hey if you bent sink them why do I have to do that well I can get them close enough where you can run the bike but it, you got to really fine tune them and this right here will tune each carburetor to each individual cylinder because no four cylinders are exactly alike. One might be a little bit more worn than the other one. More vacuum, less vacuum. But you want to get them adjusted up. And uh, shoot, I think I paid 25 bucks for that. And that works perfect for uh, sinking up the carbs. And while I'm at it, the end of these hoses, there's little nipples that come with the. Uh, that vacuum assembly and what you do is and I've tried to explain this through a text to some people and they just don't get it but this right here unscrews and then you put that nipple that comes with it's like a little brass piece nipple screw that in place and then you put in one of the hoses right there and that picks up vacuum off of that cylinder same thing over here so that and what else yeah oh and then this right here here's a handy little item if you can't keep up with all the metric size bolts you have you get something that you're not sure of and you got to run down to the parts store you need to order something these right here uh, will show what size bolt it is whether it's a screw or a nut and if whatever screws onto that that's what size it is right there and I got this off Amazon I don't know 20 bucks I think that's been a lifesaver for some off-the-wall screws I've had to deal with screws and bolt you know bolts and stuff nuts on that that uh, I wasn't sure ah here's another thing I just got this oh last year for my bike actually and this right here allows you to adjust the low speed jets right up under your carburetor here it makes it really easy to get to and I know it's dark can't really see it but uh, anyway that allows you to individually adjust each carb to a you know for a good idle um, yep. So that's that. And another good thing to have is a torque wrench. This thing has been it's worth its weight in gold. It's three eighths uh, tech ton. Right there. This thing works perfect. Especially when you're working on like brake assemblies or front end parts any parts on there that metal's pretty light and it doesn't take much to strip or break a bolt so torquing those on like they're supposed to 
really pays for itself. Don't ask me how I know. Oh, and another thing. This is a little, uh, this is 10 liter ultrasonic cleaner. It's a Vivor. And um, it holds a good, well, three carburetors and a bunch of little extras. Probably about two gallons of uh, cleaner <laughs> can go in there and you can heat it up. Uh, I think it's a 11 liter. 10 or 11. Maybe it's a 10. I don't know. But this is what I use right here. Totally. LA is totally awesome. All purpose concentrated cleaner. This stuff works great. You can put a carburetor or anything in here and leave it for a half hour. And uh, yeah, it just cleans out all the little channels, the nooks and crannies. Because some of these carburetors I get in, I've had them where three out of the four carbs will be stuck shut because they've been sitting so long. And um, so, I don't know, that and uh, get yourself about three cans of brake cleaner, spray brake cleaner. And uh, the little nozzle, I don't know if this has it. Yeah, right here. I don't know if you can see this. Whoop. My camera work is horrible. Sorry. Right here, this tip. If you grind down a piece of paper, a piece of uh, uh, sandpaper or whatever, and make like a little tip, that way it'll push up into the orifices in the carburetors. And that'll force cleaner in there instead of spraying everywhere and getting all over you. So that's another little tip there. That, and I use, um, I don't know where I dropped it at. But I use a little piece of uh, guitar wire. Well, yeah, right here. And I use, I made this one. This pulls out the really small washer an o-ring down in the low speed idle jet uh, and it pulls out the uh yeah the spring uh, for that assembly just hooks it pulls it right out um and this right here is great for cleaning out all the orifices channels and everything for where gas or vacuum goes real lifesaver those make a big difference in making sure that carburetors as clean as it can get and I guess, I don't know. I'm sure I'll think of something else when I edit this thing down a little bit. But um, that's about it. Um, these are pretty much the tools I use to get what I got to do done. So anyway, this is about an 18-minute video, so I'm going to cut this off. So appreciate everybody checking this out. Please subscribe. And uh, make comments below, whatever you want to do there. Maybe you've got some better ideas on some of this stuff I presented. It's, uh, it's all up to you. So with, uh, with that, we'll catch you later. <laughs>